What's up everybody and welcome to episode number 6 of A Growing Understanding. Today we've been lucky enough to explore the world of map creations, uh, of YouTube content creators and live streaming creators. However today it is with great pleasure that we're able to diversify a little into the world of modding. My next guest requires little introduction really. His efforts and creations have inspired many to immerse himself fully into the world of FS for many years now with several guests, previous guests referring to his work during FS13 as being one of the high points of the franchise to date. Recently, we've been lucky enough to see a fantastic range of vintage machinery land at our disposal uh, with a quality of modelling uh, that is of the highest standard, uh, including the Massey Ferguson 135 and the 240 pack that you see in front of me. For those of you yet to uh, make the connection, I am delighted today to be joined by Peter J. Peter, how are you doing? Hello, thank you very much. I'm fine. First of all, thank you very much for your invitation. It's it's with a pleasure that I'm here. I hope to answer to all of your questions and get you to know more details about developing some mods, uh, what's behind them and what we can learn about them because a mod is not only what you see, but um, what you see is quite important. So let's have a look, and I hope to answer to all of your questions. Thank you for your invitation. Superb. No, it is absolutely my pleasure. Um, I Now, we have a list of questions, as we've uh, kind of already touched on. However, I would like to... We're going to do a little something... We're going to skip through the order just to confuse you a little bit here. Um, now, a lot of people will use and frequently use all of our range of... 135s and the 20D, 20B here, which we're going to drive a little bit later on. Um, but what I must say is these are fantastic, truly uh, wonderful pieces of work. But the eagle-eyed viewers may have already seen that we have a few other machines in the yard here that are of interest. Um, we are, of course, talking about the Massey Ferguson 300 series here. Uh, by all accounts, yet to be uh, released. You've very kindly brought along the uh, the beta version, I believe this is, of the 390 um, Massey Ferguson. Would you, before we get stuck into it, would you like to just kind of give us an update as to how the progress is coming along with these wonderful machines and um, a little bit about the, the range that you'll be offering for us? <laughs> Your question is kind of tricky because... Uh, it seems that you are asking when it's going to be released, like everybody's asking. No, not at all. Um, no, I am. <laughs> they I... are close. They are close to be ready. Very close. I cannot mm. tell you when they are going to be released. Of course. There are a few uh, important details that I'm missing. Uh, they are not finished yet, that I can tell you, but they they are very very close. Mm. And people in, is eager to, to have them, to play with them, because they have been in, in work in progress for quite a long time, yes. which which is um, which is something that uh, I don't mind, because my point with 300 was to make them uh, as, as, as good as possible. I tried to explore and get as many brochures, so I have read a lot about them. I learned them quite a lot. So I've spent so much, so much time on them that I don't mind dragging them about to the end of FS uh, mm. 17. But uh, yeah, they are very, very close. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what I'm missing uh, right now to finish them here on the beta version. You don't have the sounds. You don't have the options that you can select from the store. Mm. Uh, you don't have the weights, the loader. But this is a very good playable uh, version. No doubt. Here, the... Here, uh, the wheels are set as a, as a, as the final version, but uh, you don't have the other options for the wheels. And um, you... Here, you don't have the dirt texture as well, the sounds and options. That's pretty me pretty much what's missing on this version. But I can tell you that most of those things that are missing here, I have them already finished. Oh, excellent! Yes. Um, and the versions I have there, I have quite a few tractors there. Um, almost 10 tractors and uh, with uh, quite a few options. Fantastic. And we, for uh, those who are kind of following this closely, uh, obviously you update uh -huh. your Facebook page with, um, with kind of little teasers of the, the range and the configurations uh -huh. available. So uh, if anybody wants to go and 
or anyone who hasn't yet found those, uh, what would be your Facebook page? Where can they find you to keep an eye on any updates? Um, you can search by Peter J. Modi. You will find me quite easily. Actually, if you Google Massey Ferguson 300, I guess you will get there somehow. Thank you eventually. But, but stay tuned because 300 will come out quite soon. Today I did a post uh, of the weights that will come with this with this pack. I, I you will find that. front weights. You will find a weight box to balance the tractor while using the loader. So it's going to be interesting. Yeah. Well, just um, from a very yeah. basic um, modeling standpoint, I'm not a, someone who knows anything about modeling, so I, I can't even begin to... Uh, imagine how complex this is to construct, but from a visual standpoint, it looks it looks phenomenal. Um, and the the interior again. The great thing about this the three hundred range for me was that it was on the cusp of starting to become a bit more technical. Um, so like inside, for example, with yours, there's a lot of electronic switches, whereas it was the kind of the first few models to venture into becoming a little bit more electrical. And you've been able to uh replicate that very well inside there because you have levers but then you also have switches and toggles so it's all it feels very very genuine to me if that makes sense yeah c cabins they are always very difficult to model especially if they are too smooth because nowadays tractors they are quite smooth especially inside and mm -hmm. those uh, they are quite difficult to model the side panel especially the right hand side of this tractor is quite difficult to model and took me a while to get there um, but yeah, the 300, it was quite a challenge. Um, I can tell you that I had it in game on FS15 and I was using just one i3D file. So with one i3D file, I was able to replicate almost 10 tractors. Wow. Um, back then, the configurations in the store, they were not available. So I did a script myself and everything was changing. and. It helped me to to create a small file, so the zip file was quite small. At the moment, I can even tell you that without sounds, the the file is thirty five MB, so it's quite small. Oh wow, yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, so for the number of tractors, I can tell you that all the tractors they are sharing the bonnet, the the back end, the mud cart, they 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 are shared between all of that. So I'm not making a cab for eyeline, low profile. So the same cab is used for eyeline, low profile. Um, when it comes out, you can unzip the, the folder, have a look at the i3D file and you'll will, will understand what I'm talking about. So it was quite challenging uh, to make the full range, but 300 and helps on that because they are quite simple tractors. Yeah. So. The cab is shared from the 350 until the 399, so that helps a lot. Wow. Well, even as I just walk around the, the machine here, the level of detail on, on the exterior, I've yet to show the interior, we'll get to that later, but uh, various things like the detail on the engine block, so your the pipes around the engine, the filters, um, that you've got a little sticker I was trying to zoom in on there, on the uh, engine manifold by looks of things. Very good, meticulous attention to detail on there, which is, I'll be honest, something we come to expect given your uh, brilliant creations behind us over <laughs> there. Uh, so you set the bar very high for yourself, but I know a lot of us are eagerly looking forward to to when this comes out. So uh, it'll be it'll be great. Um, yeah. Now, um, mm -hmm. Let me just say the following. Yeah, I I, I tried to add some more details. On the other end, if you have a look on one thirty five or two forty, the engine is quite bare. And I had a friend complaining about that all the time. But uh, yeah, it's not all about all those details. There are some other details that will make a difference. Uh, if, the, if the model drives fine, if it doesn't uh, flip over, if, if it attaches its shoulder, if the, if the joints are in the correct place, that mm. will help as well. Oh, no, definitely, definitely. It's all visually can be one thing, but it has to work from a gameplay standpoint. And like you say, you don't want a tractor that's kind of twitchy or unstable <laughs> or, you know, can't hook up to anything so no it's uh it's about i guess finding the, the right kind of balance really um yeah so that's it. as we can see um we are going to unhook this bale wrapper from the um the baler but i thought that it would be nice just to give a rep representation at the moment we're going to go and do some um wrapping of silage today and then we're also going to break out the 135s and do a little bit of plowing as well 
Um, Let's go. So, if you would like to jump into the baler, uh, Peter, I am going to. Uh, you can unhook the wrapper, and I'll I'll connect onto the wrapper, and I'll uh, and then we'll get ourselves away. Okay. Okay, so now where we're we gonna go, if you wanna bring up your map, we are going uh, up to fields 30 and 31. Uh, but if you want, I'm happy to, uh, I can lead the way for you. Once again. Yes, please. Where am I going? There we are. No, I apologize, the traffic is turned on here and the traffic for me in Cobra or they hate me, I think, somehow. Um, so they always <laughs> try their best to uh, cause no end of problems. So do bear with me. Um, but I'm going to sit around. Okay. Hang on there. Oh, there's one coming. The way. Okay, so. Oh, there's another one. Go. We are going to make our way up. Um, as we do, I'd like to. I'm going to just test how good you are multitasking here, Peter. I'm going to ask you a couple of different questions and grill you whilst you drive. So we'll see how that goes. Um, <laughs> okay. Fire before, away. Before we get too deep into like the, the modeling aspect of things and the technical aspect, I, I always like to find out with any guest how you kind of came about to stumbling onto Farming Simulator. When did your experience kind of start? So if you wouldn't mind kind of rewinding the clocks a little bit and just briefly telling us how you how you found Farming Simulator in the first place and, and roughly when that was. Well, um, I discovered Farming Simulator back in FS09. I was Googling, I don't remember what, but I was Googling and I found the, I found the picture of something related to the game mm. and I found it interesting. So I decided to look uh, around and find the game. Nice. Then I got the game, it was crap back then yeah <laughs> it was not fun at all load available it was quite a challenge uh, to unload grain it will swap to the rear view camera but it was interesting back then um, actually the other day I went back and I was looking for some pictures from FS09 and it was <laughs> looking really bad then FS11 came in and it was it was fun that's when I start modding in FS11. Oh, nice. Um, in FS11, um, it was easier than FS09. Back then on the FS09, you had pretty much nothing. Mm. But in FS11, it opened quite a few possibilities. Many people start modding interesting things like um, self-propelled har harvesters and such kind of things it was fun it was fun and then i st then i started creating my own uh, mods my own tractors my own implements it was quite interesting back then and so did this all stem from um, a, a farming background is this something that you've always been associated with farming and agriculture or is this just a random interest that kind of caught your eye uh, actually i'm coming from a family my fa my grandfather he had a MF240. That's the reason why I modeled the ah. 240. And uh, I started on FES UK. And back then it was LES UK yeah. Info. And my username there was MF240. Then I changed the username. Um, MF240 was always the model I wanted to do. Actually, I did it quite a long time ago uh, yeah. for FS. 11 uh, yes fs11 and then uh, that's when i start uh, modding to, together with the fsuk mod team do you remember them i do yeah do you yeah. remember them since well, by the way when did you start fs11 or i later on i think i was aware of 09 um i think i may have briefly played it once but not very much because like you say that it, it left a little bit to be desired really uh, but for me I, I really came into my own in FS11 uh, and then various life uh, commitments kind of 
I, I, I played every version since, but kind of a little sporadically, so a bit on and off really. Um, but then um, 13, I came back into it in a big way and really enjoyed 13. And then not so much in 15, but then yeah, it came back into it again for uh, for 17 here. So it's kind of been a little bit in and out, but only now um, has it really come back again, really, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does, it does. Uh, actually, I didn't play that much in FS15, but back then I was playing quite a lot. And um, I, I was started, I, I just started modding. I mm. was struggling quite a lot with quite a few things. So I was learning by myself and one day I was trying to animate a loader. I was struggling a lot, it was a Volvo uh, loader. Mm. And then I sent a, a PM to Only20 from FSUK mod team. And then we start chatting and then he invited me to join the, the, the team. It was quite fun because yeah. we we had quite a long chats. Uh, we spent our, our Friday nights chatting and talking about modding, about uh, farming, such kind of things. It yeah. was quite fun back then. Excellent. Then FS... 13 came in, oh, that one was a good game, quite nice game. It was quite challenging. Yeah, and I definitely, I want to come on to that uh, for you in a, in a little while and just get your opinions. Um, with, if we kind of focus on your um, your ability as a modder now, um, obviously you kind of alluded to finding the desire or the hunger to mod through FSUK. Um, how would you describe your your journey so far in terms of developing your skills and honing your skills? How was was that obviously something very challenging? Was it um, was it something that you relied heavily on fellow modders, or something that just over time you were able to kind of develop and and, and learn? Um, you know, when you start doing something and you when you are learning on your own, it's quite challenging. Um, Everything I know, I was learning by myself. Um, a, few, a few things I asked, uh, a few things you learn by error and try, but um, I'm always trying to learn. At the moment, I can tell you that textures is something that I'm not that good at, especially with normal maps. It, they are quite tricky to set, they are difficult to manage, and I'm learning them myself. But yeah, I'm always trying to learn. Um, I've spent FS15 learning quite a few things, and uh, as I said, I didn't play that much because it brought quite a, a few things, especially the specular map, which was quite challenging to learn for me. Mm. And nowadays, I managed how to do it, but still, the diffuse map and the normal, mm. I'm still uh, struggling with that. But yeah, I'm trying to learn, uh, and especially smooth. Uh, things they are quite tricky to model, uh, but those are more challenging because, as you said, the models they look quite nice, and that's the main thing for me. As long as the model looks good, I'm happy with it. Yeah, looks yeah. good and behaves good because that's important as well. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but yeah, always trying to learn that's the main thing here, so I can develop my own skills. Excellent stuff. All right, then, uh, what we're going to do here, Peter, is just take a quick break. Uh, we're going to come back for part two in just a second, so we'll see you then. Okay, guys, welcome back to part two of a Grown Understanding here with Peter J. Um, so, Peter, we I um, mentioned in the kind of introduction there that I recently had Chris the Irish Gamer on the podcast, uh, and he was full of praise for the, the work... Uh, you were a big part of for um, 2013 uh, with a lot of the, the models you created then and there's a, 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 some great models for the time that came out and you were mentioning there that with uh, the, the advancing in textures at the moment for example it's become a lot more difficult to create a model would you would you say that um, 2013 was your was the your most enjoyable version of the game to model, uh, to create models for? Would that be would that be a fair conclusion? I would say that FS13 was definitely the game I enjoyed the most. Um, but I can tell you that creating models, mods 
for um, the easiest game to create mods will be FN17. Even if the specular map is difficult to create, nowadays you have uh, a script for pretty much everything, so you need you don't need to create your own script for a bailer, for a wrapper, and so on. Hmm. So creating mods, nowadays, it's much easier. A lot easier. I remember when we jumped from FS11 to FS13, FS13 introduced the cylinder script for cylinders, animations, and so on. Mm -hmm. And it was quite uh, quite helpful. Um, but still, we had to create quite a few other scripts. We had no script to lock a bale, so it was a disaster to transport bales. Uh, we used quite a lot to bale. And actually, bailing is my favorite thing in FS uh, game. Oh, nice. So I'm glad that they brought now a script that does the job. But yeah, it was challenging. And jumping from FFS 13 to 15, it was uh, quite challenging because they brought the dirt. And the game was not good at the beginning, if you remember right. Vehicles were sliding all around. <laughs> but FS 17, the, the early version was quite stable. And nowadays you can have uh, pretty much everything without a script. So it's quite easier to mod nowadays, I would say. Oh, excellent. It's fascinating because as, for someone who doesn't, who isn't a, like a modeler, I can't create mods even if I wanted to. It's, it's beyond my abilities as it stands. And I also don't think I have the patience to fully uh, understand the process, really. I think that's my main issue. Um, but it's fascinating to learn uh, and, and kind of see modders adapt to the changes. For example, we all know that FS19 is is looming large on the horizon, and it won't be long at all until we, we start to see more and hear more about that version. But it'll be very interesting from a, a mod creator standpoint to see where the changes are, to see what uh, if they enhance the game engine to do X, Y, or Z, to see how that affects you guys, the creators of mods, uh, in your development, to see if it makes it any easier or if it's any more difficult or what what kind of platforms or, or roadblocks you have to kind of overcome, really. I think it'll be great to see that. Yeah, definitely. Um, I hope that uh, bring the option um, of using scripts in FS19 in consoles. I don't believe so, but it will be good uh, because most of the private messages I get uh, are just people asking, is this going to be on console? Is this going to be on console? Yeah. Um, I would like to read a few mods with scripts. And for instance, here on MF300, uh, I'm not going to add IC, Interactive Control. Mm. I'm not a huge fan uh, of them, but still, everybody wants it. And I'm not going to add it because I want them to be on consoles. Yeah, okay. But it would be good to have that on consoles. Of course, those aspects from the map, uh, we need them. We need to have them in the game. But what people want the most are vehicles. How they behave, how they look, what kind of vehicles. So those are the, the things that the users use all the time. Yeah. So... Players, they want to play with a tractor that looks nice, that is a tractor that they have, or that is similar to the one they have in real life. Yeah. So, even if the map is important, vehicles will always be very important. And if you ask me, Pure Farm is, is around, and uh, it looks nice, it looks nice, but the vehicles there, or the brands there, they are not so strong, so they will... They will have to keep up to have huge brands, the ones that are huge in the market. Oh yeah, definitely. To find to find their players, yeah. And it's interesting you mentioned that, and uh, we may well come back onto it later because there was a recent announcement about uh, pure farming enabling modern uh, Insta Mods, yeah. platforms. So that could be something really big for them. But we will. Uh, we'll, I would like to touch on that later for sure. Um, what I'd be very curious in learning, you mentioned briefly when we were looking over the tractors in the, the store, um, would you mind kind of detailing, let's say we look at the 300 series here, uh, you have the idea that you want to create a 300 mod, 
how do you how do you go from kind of that idea to concept to the completion? Is there like a set process you go through, including like the research aspect and the design, or do you just start with an idea, get into uh, your software, and just, and go from there? Is it something that you have a regimented progress uh, or process you follow? Yes, I do. I do. Actually, uh, that's <laughs> very curious that you ask that because. Even if I decide I'm going to to this mod, mm. if I'm not on the mood, I cannot. I even sit here in the computer and I open software and then I quit. Because if you're not on the mood, you cannot do it. Yeah. At least that's for me. But the way I usually go is something like, I do some research about the model or about I want, what I want. Let's say I want a tractor. I do some research about what kind of tractor I would like to do. Yeah. If I find enough information, pictures, many, many pictures, uh, specifications, it's not all, only about pictures, because I can, uh, I can even tell you um, a funny episode I had when I was modeling the MF-1250. Uh, um, back then I was part of FES UK mm -hmm. and one of the team members was annoying me so bad because the the slope of the wood was not looking right. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I was modeling against a picture. So I had no blueprints, but the picture was working like a blueprint. Mm. It was quite close and still. I don't know if you if it was because he was drunk or because he just wanted to annoy me, but he was saying that it was not right. I had to change it. <laughs> okay, so first of all, I decide what the model, the model I want to mod. Then I do a quite huge research and uh, find pictures of the details, everything that I want to model. After the pictures, I start modeling. And then when I'm happy with the modeling, I do a rough in-game um, to see how the things look like. And then I go back to the 3D software program and I change what's not, what's not right because, you know, sometimes um, one part when moving goes through the other and that doesn't look nice so you need yeah. to sort it out uh, yeah it's quite challenging but um even before modeling and this is uh, what i was um explaining before about the 300 uh, before modeling i decide what i want to do so let's say i want to do the 375 and the 390 so i go and do some research to understand how they look like and if I can use the same model for both, because then I will share the parts. So I will share the bonnet, I will share the engine, I will share the cab, and so on. So I need to decide how I'm going to do that. So if someone is good at modeling, at, at the 3D modeling, um, and is not good at in-gaming or scripting, it will be more challenging, because when you are modeling, you will think about how you are going to in-game it, which makes it a lot easier. Um, sometimes I do in-game for some people, and then I need to ask them to go back and remodel a few things because it's not correct and needs to be sorted out for the in-game. So it's uh, much much more work. Uh, yeah, and then usually when, I, when I'm modeling, I do the texture as well, so I model and map at the same time so I don't need to go back and map an entire tractor because as you can imagine uh, the huge amount of bolts and nuts here oh, yeah. uh, will, be, will be quite time consuming. No, I bet. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Wow, fascinating. And then uh, obviously it's you know, you know, it's probably a process that you refine over the, the various different creations you've made and that as we like you said, as we progress into like FS17, it's going to take a little bit more because maybe the textures take a little bit more, uh, a little bit more work, and we need to refine various aspects of the the, um, the texture maps, for example. But it's just something that you kind of adapt to your process, and then you you continue with that process. You don't kind of change everything and restart again. Definitely, um, as you have noticed, some of mods I have released for FS17. Um, were converted from previous versions. Mm. Um, I can give you an example. The Bale trailer, the Richard Western, yep. um, I didn't change the model 
but I fully remapped it because okay. the texture was not okay to receive the dirt. So I did a full remap on it. Actually, I changed the, 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 the axle. It was not looking right, so I changed a, a few details there. But other than that, it was just remapping. Because when the game brings something new, you need to adapt your model to fit in. So you need to have a look on how you are going to in-game it, what kind of options you want there, and you might have to change it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. For instance, uh, th that wrapper that you are carrying right now, yep. um, I had it in-game on the previous versions, so it was prepared, pretty much prepared for this new game because all the parts, all the moving parts, all the foldable parts were separated, and I had a good mapping there, so it was okay. Okay, awesome. Well, I must admit, you can't, as we look at this wrapper here, we can't tell that it, you know how with some mods that uh, come to FS17, for example, it's quite easy to tell that they were converted from a previous version. Um, what's definitely um, visible with this one is that you cannot you cannot tell that that is the case. You put the effort into make it a good conversion rather than a uh, a slightly poorer conversion, which is great to see. It really, really is, and it's nice because it's it's a. We do have a lot of bail wrappers in the game, but the great thing about this one being inline, you you know, with a slight tweak to the bailer, such as the one you're carrying there, you're able to completely change the your approach to the gameplay because it's two in one effectively. It's a great combination. I want. I wanted to. We have a weller with them, but as as you as you were asking, I was saying, I just got bored when I start modeling the baler, yeah. so I quit it, and I will be back to the baler later on. So a rainy day project. The baler is online, well, <laughs> so I decide to model the 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 toucher, the frame you can see on this baler here. Hmm. By the way, when when you post this this interview, you can post there the link for this baler. Okay, excellent. For everybody. I will definitely do that. Links will be in the description below for the for the baler with the rear attacher. Uh, fantastic news. Um, so if we if we kind of move on a little bit, obviously the process you've just described is quite a um, quite a rigorous process from start to finish. Is there a particular aspect of that process that you enjoy the most? Is it like the excitement of designing the the model for the first time, or is it the research and like kind of really detail drumming like drilling down into which aspect you want to to make or is this one aspect of the whole uh, process that really appeals to you more than the rest of it i suppose um modeling modeling is is my favorite part uh texturing is not that fun but modeling is my favorite part because usually i study the model before i start mm. and then i model it that's definitely my my favorite part. Nice. And then in the... gaming, in gaming, sorry, in gaming and scripting, some is annoying because um, it doesn't work as you want to. Yeah. I can tell you that I have a few mods that I did for FS11, and because they were quite small and the game doesn't like small machinery, so I decide to forget about them. So they are there, forgotten. Okay, uh, I was going to say that. I imagine the the in-game aspect, the first time you take your hard work, your, your, your model in-game, must be both very re rewarding but also very frustrating because for the first time you see your hard work in a game, but at the same time you then start to look around and go, oh, well, no, that needs to change and this doesn't work, that's wrong. And you start to pick up all these uh, little aspects you need to fix. So I imagine it works both ways there. Yeah, yeah. If, if, there is something, if that's something that you can fix, good. If it's something that you cannot fix, uh, I prefer to go away and start another model instead of fighting with that mod because you are not going to win. So <laughs> the small machinery, I always um, think about them twice. Uh, many people is asking me to model stuff for MF135 and 240. Mm. Uh, yeah, I know that they need um, a trailer and a few other implements, but the game is not good with uh, small machinery. So I will do that at some stage, but not for the moment because I prefer to do some stuff for MF300 yeah, for the no, moment. Definitely. So we're just going to creep through here and we've got a tiny little field here to do. Watch my hands. Please don't run those over. 
Um, and then we are in here. All right. Nice little paddock here. So I'm going to let you just get on with it to start with, and I'm going to watch you go around a little bit. All right. So what I was, I was, I always do a little bit of research before we, before once once you kindly accept her to come on here. I always do a little bit of research into you know into your creations and your um, the mods you you've made and to see how many of them I kind of recognize and I use. Um, and with with your own creations there, what surprises me when you when you go into the mod hub for example and you type in Peter J the number of mods that come up that I don't realize are actually your creations initially. Um, you know, there, there are the, the main ones that you associate with yourself, such as the, um, the MF pack, and then the, the Mikhail Baylors are a particular highlight for me as well. Uh, the Bale Rappers, beg your pardon. Um, but then what's fascinating to me is that how many other little bits and pieces we see, like the Bale handling equipment, the trailers, the small plow and disc set for the uh, 135s. So, what I would, what I say is, that it's, it's when I start to see what in what uh, the various different machines that you've created, I then look back over my game saves on uh, FS and I see how many of those have crept into each one of my maps just subconsciously because I, I like the I like the the mod. I think it's a good mod. It reflects what I would use. So then I'll I'll bring it in. So like, for example, if we look at the one three fives. I have two different series going at the moment where there's a 135 in some description just sitting in, being used in some capacity. Um, and then I also find that I have a lot of the front loader equipment in there as well. So I, I often think it's a really great sign to see that and it must be good from your perspective to see, you know, so, like when people, obviously part of the farming sim simulator community, the strength is that people upload photos and videos to various different websites and for you to just flick through FS UK, for example, and see your creations appearing in so many different versions and uh, and users game saves. Must be really nice to see that appreciation of your of your work coming through. Definitely. I, actually, when I start modding and when I start releasing my own mod as an individual or as a team member, because I've been on a few teams already, as you may know, mm. um, uh, we were just looking for the satisfaction of seeing people using our own stuff. Nowadays, giants compensate you, but that's not the thing. Mainly, uh, it's about people using your stuff and enjoying what you're doing. Yeah. Um, because that's part of the game. And the game, the thing is, seeing nice pictures of your uh, of what you do, and sometimes when I a picture, I save it. Um, because because it's fun, yeah, yeah. I enjoy to see people using my stuff, and there, there is one PM that I remember. Someone on FES UK just sent me a PM saying, uh, "Thank you very much for doing the 135. Uh, I'm 50 something, and it brings me back to my youth. Hmm. Thank you." Wow. Uh, th those kind of things they are fun. Um, more than money, that uh, that. Uh, <laughs> Is is what makes you happy and uh, keeps you doing what you do and try to figure out what next will be the trend and what people would like to use next. Yeah, definitely. that's quite enjoyable. Yeah, and I think there's a, a growing trend as you mentioned now for like the, the the classic equipment, so the older tractors and the older machinery. If you look at the the 300 series, is, has a lot of uh, anticipation behind it. The 135 and the 240s were very well received for the same reason. Um, but then if you also look at other modders such as Matt XGS and his TW pack, for example, the older, the new machines are all very nice, the big shiny new John Deere's or Fence or whatever they may be. But the older machines have that element of character. And particularly when you look at the amount of customization you're able to include on one of these 300s, for example, you can really make it feel or look exactly like uh, a 300 you may have driven like 20 30 years ago whenever it was you know it's 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 great to be able to have that and really brings in that that immersion and that, that realism for for those people who who crave it yeah that's mainly because the game only gives you um one or two classic uh, mm. tractors not, not even look at the tools they are not 
um, classic. They are all, all new tools. So people is looking for something that is not in the game. Yeah. And classic machinery, actually, I enjoy them uh, the most. I prefer a classic tractor than a brand new shiny uh, JCB or such. Yeah. Even Definitely. not saying that I don't like them, but I prefer a old classic uh, boxy looking tractor than a brand new and shiny um, piece of equipment. Yeah, that's why people is looking for classic stuff. Mm, definitely. Now, you mentioned there that obviously in FS17 it saw the launch of the of Giant's Mod Hub uh, and the ability now, which is incredible for, for consoles to be able to download mods. How have you found the transition in, in FS17 to the Mod Hub as opposed to previous versions 13, 15, for example, where FSUK was such was a so was in my mind at least the main go-to website to find new new mods. How have you found that transition across? Is it um, something that has improved your your enjoyment of creating mods? That made it a little bit trickier. How would you how would you find that? Actually, I don't find very hard to put a mod mod up, and they try to help us. Actually, when they do their testing, they always tell you what's not good and what you need to do. Mm. Um, my mods, most of the times, they fail on the <laughs> German translation because, as you can see, my English is not that good. You can imagine the German. So um, they always give me the correct sentences or translation. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, they, they figure out that without mods, they are nothing. And they see that uh, there are many other games coming on and they need to keep up, so they need to support the community. Uh, I remember we had uh, a chat uh, some time ago discussing that, and they said that they will be close to community, because yeah, that, definitely they need to do that. Um, I remember back then in FS11, we were doing the Fordsons, if you remember, yeah, and we had the, the Doe. Uh, those are basically two tractors together, and back then, um, the helper was a disaster. So when it was doing the turns, the steering was not smooth. It, it was making the tractor jump away. And we asked them, we posted on their forum, and we got nothing. But nowadays, if you ask, if you send them an email, they reply to you. So they are improving on that, and they need to. If they want people to keep playing their game, they need to support the players. And this game, this game... Uh, won't be what it is without mods. Yeah, absolutely. And what's fascinating about that is, and I guess we'll come on to it now as well. You mentioned earlier that like the so pure farming have now realised that you know if they want a game to even come close to farming simulator, they have to involve the community. They have to involve the modders and the the map creators out there, um, assuming they allow maps to be created. But without without customizable mods, the interest won't be there. For, for any average gamer really it's um, you know it needs that that second level of interaction really yeah nowadays simulators without mods won't get there so uh, if you want to play simulation you, you want to have something that is similar to what you use in real life um, so it's impossible for a game to bring all the brands and such but if they give you the option to have mods, people will bring that stuff that is not there, so that's quite good, quite good. Excellent. All right, guys, we're just going to take our second break there. Uh, we've run a little bit over. Do join us back here for part three in just a second. Okay, guys, welcome back to part three of a growing understanding. Uh, Peter J and myself are currently just uh, finishing up this little paddock here, and then we're going to go... We're going to take it back a few years, we're going to jump into a 135 and a 240 I do believe, and we're going to do some ploughing, so that's going to be good fun. Um, but for now we'll just get this little bit finished up here. Um, so Peter, at the moment, obviously we're just, as you mentioned earlier, we're kind of just tidying up a few few loose ends here uh, with your with your 300 series and you know, you, you're, you're, you're feeling confident about the, 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 the progress made there. You mentioned that you have a, like a, a, a baler in the background um, that you maybe that you started working on, but now we're not so sure. Have you got any other ideas ahead of you that you might want to think about? Have you got any uh, ideas for any more like 
pipeline creations, or are you thinking that maybe you're quite rightly need to have a little bit of a break and wait for 2019? What's your thought process? If you ask me about ideas, oh, I have some. Uh, if you ask me about which ones I'm going to do, <laughs> not so sure. But uh, I can tell you that uh, I don't know if you checked on my Facebook page. I posted a picture of a box. That's something that I'm going to do. So I'm, I I'm going to bring the, the, some um, boxes. The wooden crate. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. Um, I'm thinking about something that will be able to carry potatoes, sugar beets, such kind of things. Mm, nice. Yeah, let's see, let's see. When I have something prepared, I will post a picture. Oh, definitely. Other than that, I can tell you that I would like to do some implements here for the MF300 because, as I mentioned earlier, the game is for tractors over 90 uh, horsepower. So, for something that is under that, you need to search on quite hard for a nice tool. So, I'm thinking about doing some tools for them, MF300. Oh, that'd be really good. That'd be nice. Which tools? Which tools? I cannot tell yet. I'm thinking I'm doing my research, <laughs> yeah, and sure. when I'm prepared, when I have something, I will I will share. That'd be nice. Um but yeah, not doing a break, at least for now. Well, I guess it all really comes down to, like you mentioned before, how the mood strikes you when you, you know, let's say in sure, yeah. a, a week, two weeks, a month, whenever it may be that you've, you know, the, the 300 series is out there, everyone's enjoying them and you've had like a little bit of downtime just to enjoy the, the mod yourself. Then it's yeah, like, okay, yeah. well, now I need a new challenge. Where's that challenge going to come <laughs> from? And then it's like, well, today I might want to make a baler. Tomorrow I want to make a plow. You know, just kind of That's it. see That's how it, it lands. Yeah. But yeah, definitely, I, I, uh, MF300, they need some sort of tankers, some sort of plows, some sort of trailers. Yeah, oh, those kind of things. Some of the older uh, silage trailers, like the quite smaller ones, would be look great on a... I know a lot of people yeah, would love yeah. to see some, some of the older... The 2000 or the FS13 silage trailers that were around, some of those guys were really good. So to couple yeah, up onto a, a 390 would be pretty, pretty epic. Yeah, um, I will keep that in mind. <laughs> that's just my thought. I know it's uh, by all means don't go off of what I think. Uh, oh, car. Oops. All right, so we're gonna head on back down to the store. Uh, we're gonna pick up a a tractor and plow each. We're going to do a nice little bit of ploughing here somewhere. We will have to uh, find a nice field that we should jump into, but good thing about Cobra Park Farm, there's always plenty of options around here, so we'll, yes. we'll see what we can we're find. can find the field everywhere, yeah. Ooh, nearly crashed into a car. Okay. Uh, let's get this off around here. And stop. Oops. I'm going to... I thought you just crashed into me. There we go. And away we go. So, and now in terms of, uh, if we look at the moment, obviously we've, we've touched on it a few times, but I'd just like to get your your opinions on them in a little bit more detail. Have you had the chance to look at the likes of cattle and crops or pure farming, farmers uh, dynasty? Do you have any, uh, have you managed to create any opinions on those? Do you think that they'll be successful? Is there anything you like or dislike particularly about those? Well, Cattle and crops, um, they are bringing what a farming simulator is missing, which is um, the ground, the fermenting ground. That is definitely what farming simulator 19 must have. Mm. Of course, seasons, but um, I'm pretty sure that seasons will be, will be carried on because they have it on consoles now. So I'm confident that the farming simulator 19 will have that. Other than that, Catalan Crops promises a lot. Let's see, let's see. About pure farming, also has something that I quite enjoy a lot. And as I said, small machineries, uh, things under 90 uh, breakers powers hmm. is something that the game needs. And they are bringing uh, all shards, which um, requires small machinery. I like that. Um, I like the small scale uh, farming. So that's something that is going to be interesting there. But let's see. Uh, Pure Farm failed previously, but let's see mm. what they bring now in the future. I'm confident that it's going to be much better now. Yeah, I think that it's... Um, what, I, what I found interesting about Pure Farming is that they have brought in the uh, ability to, to allow modders to create uh, private mods, which when you... 
when you look at some of the promotional work out there, some of their their mod their models in my mind left quite a bit to be desired. They were they were, if you compare them to the the the, the standard uh, giants models in FSUK, they were quite far behind in terms of quality. So to allow modders to to come on board, then you know anyone like if you ever felt the need to, you could see a, a range similar to the one three five, for example, go in there, and that would be great to include that diversity but uh it's it's certainly gonna be something that's interesting i think that uh and i've mentioned this on quite a few podcasts but i think the best thing to happen from farming simulator uh from cattle and crops and from pure farming is that it it, it gives giants that extra incentive to really push themselves to do more i don't know if if cattle and crops had never come around if we'd have ever seen a, a seasons enter the, the the base game for for farming simulator for example yeah, definitely. But the thing is that uh, pure farming, it was just starting. So it's normally to just bare mods and simple uh, models, simple textures. Mm. It was the same with FS. But uh, nowadays it's growing up. Uh, growing up. Um, what I see from cattle and crops is that they want to start uh, they want to start as in, with a proper game. Everything developed or at least with the features that uh, farming simulator was missing. Yeah. Still, I, I know that they are struggling with uh, some development features, but yeah, they are trying to make the game start with a high standard. A farming simulator started as a very bare game, very simple. You could only plow and sow, and that was pretty much it. Mm. But um, mm. nowadays, you can do pretty much here on the farming simulator. You can see also uh, a quite nice um, feature that nobody pays attention. You can cut a tree wherever you want. So the size of the trunks, uh, you, you can cut it anywhere. So that's quite difficult to script. Um, the same goes for the field volumes on the trailers. Um, they brought that over. They, 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 they made it in the game. I, I think cattle and crops is trying to bring the gamer with the game already with well, those features to make it cool from the beginning to start at the same level as farming simulator. So mm. I think they are going to do good, but they they need to, to to bring the game over, make it easy easy to mod, and if they do that, I guess the game will succeed. Awesome. So we're standing in front of these little these four great machines here, Peter. Um, I reckon that I should buy another one of your little plows here, and we should both go out and do some plowing. How does that sound? Uh, sounds good to me. Perfect. Which one do you want to drive? One thirty-five or two forty? Uh, for me, I'm going to let you drive your 240, uh, and I'm going to take the, the 135, I think, if that sounds good to you. Yeah, it does. I'm going to drive this one. Excellent. I'll buy a second plow, uh, and then we can both have one of those. So I'm just buying you a plow now that you should be able to just connect onto. Uh, it's just a small one. So yeah, yeah I guess that plow will be... Yeah, if you just take that small little plow, that, that, that'd be fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, okay, where's that one there? Oh, by the way, I can tell you that some features of the 300 series were already released. The axle here on the 240, the back axle, the front and rear axle on the 240, mm -hmm. they are the same ones as in the 300 series, oh, in nice. real life, in the real life as well. Oh, I see. Many, pe okay. many people miss the the rear axle here on the 240s. On the disc version, it is different from the other one. Oh, so it, you have the disc version there, is that correct? Um, uh, actually, the four-wheel drive is by the... Okay, so if I then pick up... Uh, oh, no, hang on. I'm just going to buy another one, so we can have a look at that, and compare. <sighs> you can compare over here. The one with loader, uh, the one with loader is the disc version. Do, 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 do. And the industrial version is drum brakes. Uh, yeah. uh, oh, okay, I can tell you by this that this is the kind of details that I study before I start modeling. Yeah, definitely. Well, I would say the industrial version on now 
it wasn't this particular model. We had on one, my family farm, we had a um, a 50D, like so obviously a little mm-hmm. bigger than this, but it yeah. was a, like a 50D with the with the square boxy cab on it as well, and we had a little loader on the front. So um, that this, kind of cab. yeah, this was lovely to see this come out because I was, I um, did you see? Uh, Nathan 6930's edits he did of these where he ad- allowed the uh, 135's to put a little front loader on mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. I put the yeah, yeah. I put the yellow loader onto this as well and it was just <laughs> glorious it was like just bringing back so many memories so that was uh, that was great to see uh, but yeah I love the I love the industrial version that uh, bright yellow is a really nice looking machine and the contrast you have on this side with the uh, with the the white filters looks really good Really, really. Yeah, good I though. did. I did it just for fun. Actually, the yellow version. Yeah, it, it looks it looks superb. I've been able to put the industrial road tires on the front of it as well. Just perfect. Really, really good. So, you're already hooked up to a plow. I've been talking too much, so I need to quickly jump on and get this stop. Perfect. And it's nice that we do have like the, the little three thorough plow and the set of discs there just to have something, uh, at least a couple of bits of equipment to use. Um, Actually, I did them uh, just for the 240 and 35. Um, these tractors need small tools, so they should be smaller, but uh, plug with um, two thorough plugs would be boring, so I decided to make it three. Exactly. But yeah, it's basically to be used with these two tractors. That works for me. It looks pretty good. What we might do, because everything is currently growing, so we will go on. Let's find a crop that we can plow through. Uh, we're going to go and plow through some some potatoes, actually. I think just because it's the newest field. Um, so onwards. Oh, there's a car coming. Watch out. Ooh. Uh, so we're going to go into one of these, we'll go into the fields on our left there, I think. Alright. Uh, and we've got to finish the whole field inside 15 minutes, so it shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> yeah, alright. Okay, so as we as we head on over there, um, no doubt your work along with many of the modders works will have inspired people to kind of have a go themselves and open Blender and GE and see what they can do. What would be your, if you could offer any words of advice to, to a, someone starting out, what would you, what would that be? What advice would you give them? If someone is starting, I would say don't be ambitious. Even if it's easier to mod nowadays, 17, hmm. um, start by something that is boxed. I will say, look, look, for, look for, look for uh, a model that is boxy enough i will say a weight or something similar mm. don't start by doing a tractor because it will it will be quite challenging do yeah. something that is boxy um and search on forums or youtube uh, to find out to the things that you have no idea because nowadays in fs uk you have people that is helping all, all the time so if you are start, starting, I am pretty sure that you will find people that will know how to do it. So search and ask if you don't know. Don't be afraid to ask the question. I, I'm sure it's very similar in a way to kind of map building, that you just have to start, have a go and see how you get on. You know, experience and practice, like you say, trial and error are your kind of best friends really with this. The more you try, the more you learn, the more you'll figure out for next time, okay, maybe I want to do this slightly differently. Yeah, basically that's right here. Pretty much it. You you need to try. If you fail, try again. Um, yeah. Don't don't quit, <laughs> because I, I can tell you that the the quick loader I did, um, I was struggling with uh, skin bones. Yep. Um, it was making the game crash all the time because skin bones and normal maps, they are quite difficult to set up. Okay. And I was having quite a huge fun with that. But um, after some huge research, I managed to figure it out. And it's quite helpful to, and quite nice to have it on loaders, so it looks nice. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Uh, this little plow, I've never actually used it yet, but it looks great with the uh, 
the soil texture on the furrows. It's nice to see a smaller <coughs> little ploughing game, actually. I mean, it's be very rare that you would use this on a large map, but it looks it looks pretty cool. It's nice to bring it out. Yeah, it does for people for people that like small scale farming. That's quite yeah. nice. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, and I suppose it's when you when you're creating a machine like this, as you mentioned, you had that message on FSUK from an older gen elder gentleman who was touched to be able to like kind of be remembered about his childhood by like the one three five series. Uh, it must strike you, you know, or be a real eye opener as to how many of the age range of of uh, gamers who play this platform, um, you know, and who look just to to play it to remember their glory days or you know the childhood memories that kind of thing so it must be a real eye-opener to see all the different people who actually look to download your map and enjoy it yeah it's 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 fun and i enjoy that I, as i said that's what i enjoy the most see people playing with with your stuff um but most of the times i don't i don't do things for people uh just because they ask, I don't do things mm. uh, to please people. I do things that I like to do. For instance, oh. two two forties. As I said, I had to do them, so they are my tractor. Yeah. And the one thirty five, um, I had to do it as well because basically I had the model over there. Um, that one thirty five is based on the two forty. Actually, it's the opposite. Two forty is based on one thirty five, and because it remembers me. When I was a kid uh, and I was rolling on the sillage pit, mm. my cousin he was driving the two four, driving the one thirty five from our neighbor, uh, so it also brings me back in time. Nice. And um, yeah, that's it. I, I don't do mods that I don't like. I do models that I enjoy. That's the main thing. And as I said, if you get bored, you quit and you don't you don't finish that mod. So. Um, I always pick something that I enjoy, if the model is nice, and if it's what I'm looking for, I do it. Yeah, I think um, that comes through. And then, yeah, because if you if you are modeling you don't like, you will quit. You will never finish it. Yeah, exactly. I think as well, if you look at your 300 series, based off what you were talking about earlier, if you were just doing it because, you know, someone asked you to, to model it, your passion and enthusiasm wouldn't have been there to create so many different versions and so many configurable features. You know, you'd have probably just created the model as it is that we've been driving around, the beta version, and just let it go. Whereas you've put all of that time and effort into finding those extra features and configurations to make it so much more individual that that really shines through and makes it uh, the model that, that we all come to, to, to love as soon as it's downloaded. So I think that really shines through. And, if you like, say, if you are just making something because of, for the sake of making it, that's going to show through in the end that the enjoyment's not there, and you know, which will ultimately lead to people um, not downloading the, the, the model. Yeah, and and you don't finish it properly because if you are if you are doing just because, you will rush, the the mod will not work as it should. Um, everything should take its time, and uh, I know that three hundred should be out by now. But I don't bother with that because I want to make it go out when I think it's ready and when I think I'm pleased with it, I'm happy. I know many people will say, oh, you missed this model, you missed this version. Um, you should have done this way, you should have added. I see, I know, I agree, but I cannot please everybody. Hmm. So I do it uh, as, as I'm pleased. Of course, I take into consideration people that is going to use it. Otherwise, I won't be releasing in consoles. I will do it with scripts and will release for consoles. So yeah. you need to balance both things. And um, I guess that, that FS17 is bringing uh, that to the, community, the community because you can have quite nice features, um, j even on consoles, uh, as an example. Um, you, can, you can select at the, the store between two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. Yeah. And the built-in script allows you to make it uh, real two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. So you don't need to have a script for that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, this is just a small example. That's great. That's really good. Um, I would like to kind of just... We've got one more kind of in-depth question. If you like, then if you quick-fire questions. What would... With 2000... With FS19 uh, on the horizon... 
Uh, we've obviously heard a lot of rumours at the moment about what might be arriving and what features or brands and that all of those um, rumours are running wild at the moment. Is there anything in particular you would like to see come in from both a, a, a gamer's perspective and also Peter J, the modder? Uh, my request will be more as a modder than a player because I mod more than I play. Mm. Um, seasons? is a must, so I'm not going to even say seasons. Yeah. Uh, the formation on the ground, it's a must uh, as well. So I'm not going to even ask for those. I would like to ask for simple things like, uh, you know, I don't know if you mod a lot or if you are aware of that, but the um, cylinder script, it has a groups option. So I, as an example, the, um, the trailer to log, uh, to load logs, mm -hmm. you can select which group you want to move with a mouse. You see what I mean? Yeah. Um, so they should bring a script, the foldable script should allow you to select which part to move. So you could have uh, windows, doors, and such kind of things uh, moving, even for consoles, mm. without, without um, a complicated script. Things like those would be quite easy to implement um, and will bring quite nice features to the game, those kind of things. I, I also like to see on small machinery. I would like to see the game with a purpose because nowadays the game kind of is driving around. I would like to see the game starting with a small uh, tractor or even an horse, and then you grow up. Um, something like that will yeah. be quite cool inst instead of missions uh, yeah, because be that will be nice, yeah. I like the idea of potentially having like a, a version within the game where you, like you say, if you want to play just the arcade side of things, you could start off with like, you know, all the nice new modern shiny equipment. But if you want to play like a journey, you'd start yeah. off, like you say, with maybe a tractor the size of a 135 or equivalent or like, say, like, yeah. like, a, like a horse. And then you have to, you have a few bits of equipment for said small machine or horse. And then you slowly, you know, you build it up slowly and you, um, you know, you, you become more successful, you have more money, you can increase your machinery and really slowly build it through to the modern day behemoths that we that we all know of. So yeah. that'd be a nice feature and it'll yeah, add because... so much more work to a, to a, uh, to a game. <laughs> yeah, that's it, because uh, the way it is, everybody will, will go, uh, will jump straight away to big stuff. Mm. Yeah, definitely. And it's also, it will be, when you, when you look at, say, you know your mods for example when you buy them in the store you can configure anything you'd want so why couldn't you configure everything you'd want with the, with the type of game you're about to start so you know if you want seasons on yes or no if you want to have um, yeah, like start exactly in like summer that. or start in winter uh, because right now you start with seasons and you're you're in spring every time and you've got to, you've got to sow your crops well it would be quite nice if you started in the summer and you have to harvest your crops or, you know, just be able to change it up a little bit like that. Um, yeah, 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 stuff like that. would be fun, yeah. That's definitely something that could be interesting. Um, alrighty, mm -hmm. so... Let's get to the end here. Yeah. We're actually making some nice progress considering we've got two tiny plows. <laughs> We're not doing too badly at all here. So we, we've got a few quick, uh, quick five questions to wrap up with here, Peter. Um, what I would like to start with here, Peter, would be if we look at all of the mods you've created across all of the platforms, what would be your uh, the favorite mod you've either fully worked on or as you mentioned when you were previously part of different teams that you had a part in creating? Um, I'm sorry, are you asking me which one will be my yeah, or which so, one I enjoyed the most? Sorry, I was distracted. Uh, no, it's alright. Either either case, really. Which one? Which mod that you've had a, a part? Either, you've either completed, completely built yourself, or uh, or a mod that you've kind of been part of a team of working towards. Which one have you enjoyed like the design of the most? Um, actually, uh, uh, the mod the mod I enjoyed the most it was uh, the Richie Bale trailers. Okay. Back uh, with FSUK mod team, mm. it was not my model. What I did on that mod, I did the script. Um, oh, I enjoyed it so much. Actually, it was my my favorite mod all times, because back then, as I said, there 
for you to load bales, it was a challenge. Yeah. And oh, yeah. on that mod, I managed to find the script. Actually, I managed to, to replicate the script there. So it was loading automatically, raising the arms. And you cannot imagine, because I was learning by myself scripting. So you cannot imagine how many times I had crashing because I was missing um, a, a line on the script. It was quite challenging. Uh, yeah. And I figured out after releasing the mod, and there was a, a simple feature there that we wanted to do, to press a key and lower all arms at once. Um, we managed to make to make it lift, but not lower, because we were playing with true and false, and I was making false um, to send events in, in multiplayer, so it, in multiplayer it was not lowering the arms. Okay. So we decided to not implement it, and after releasing, I noticed that it was my fault because I was selecting false. <laughs> but yeah, it was quite fun. And nowadays I still go to YouTube to to watch the, the video and that we created when it was work in progress yeah. uh, because it remembered me uh, those times when I was working. It was a good fun. Oh, nice. And on the same kind of theme, the, your favorite mod, again, from any, any version of the game that was created by someone else entirely? Okay, that's an easy one because with no doubt it will be uh, the tip anywhere. Oh yeah. Um, back in FS11, um, shovels and such kind of things, they were useless. The game had the forks, you could use the forks uh, for bales, but mm -hmm. shovels, they had no use. And the tip anywhere made it possible, so uh, you could dump uh, your trailer, you could, you could load it with your shovel. So it was quite interesting, and it was my favorite mod all times. And with that, it opened doors uh, for us modders to model uh, a few other things. So yeah, definitely my favorite mod all times. Nowadays, it's kind of pointless because it's built in on the game. Yeah. Um, much better, of course. But uh, yeah, back then it was quite a good mod. But it's never. It, it's. I would never have predicted that would have been your answer, but it's great to when you think about that because it's something that, as the evolution of the game continues, you just take it for granted now. But when you're right, when you think about uh, the early days, there was apart from maybe pushing the bale around occasionally, there was no need for a for a shovel. It was it was redundant. You yes, you could drive around the map, but it would do next to nothing aside from that. So it's fascinating that uh, to point that out actually. Uh, so yeah, it's really cool. Uh, and finally, um, I, I always like to to kind of gain an idea of people's perceptions of the, the farming simulator community as a whole, really. Um, so, for example, if I was new to to the, the franchise, if I just picked up a copy of the game on Steam today, and I was like, hey, Peter, how do I make this work? What's, what's good about this? Um, what would be your selling point for the, the community as a whole? And if if you had to recommend one person to me, be it like a mod creator, a map creator, a YouTuber, who would it be? Okay, on that one you got me because um, I don't watch that much reviews on YouTube. Uh, I don't, uh, I don't get along with other teams. <laughs> okay. um, I get along with the previous members of the teams I have been with. Mm -hmm. So I, I will mention those. So, but I'm not going bring names here you know okay. them you know the members from my previous teams yeah, cool. I get along with them we keep talking but um, I don't usually uh, go to YouTube or Facebook following others so I'm not close to anyone else but I will say you can find pretty nice guys in FES UK that's where I started mm. you'll find nice people there but yeah right. <laughs> that's pretty much it and what would you say about the I suppose if you could kind of elaborate on the benefits of, let's say, the forum on FSUK, what would you, how would you define define that place? Um, FSUK, I, I started using it um, just to, to look at pictures, and as you said, it's go there and see my mods being used. 
but the form is quite important because when you are developing something and you are stuck because you, you cannot go ahead on this or on that, um, you can you can search for help there. I'm pretty sure that someone will come and say, try this or try that. I even myself sometimes answer to some people when I know the answer. But um, you can also find people to test for you. Uh, some people that you can trust and share your mod with because the most important part of developing a mod uh, will be the testing. Um, I can give you an example. Uh, when I was about to release or to upload MF-135, mm-hmm. um, one of the guys that is testing for me pointed out that uh, the nuts on the front wheels, they were not, they were not spinning, they were uh, static. And I was about to miss such a small detail that I took as granted as okay. So yeah. testing is quite important, and you can find people there that will be uh, good to help you on that. So you can always find people, the testers. Yeah, mainly, mainly people that will know what they are doing, because testing is about it. Uh, that Those guys, they need to know what they are doing. Okay, definitely. Awesome. Well, with that, uh, Peter, we are pretty much done. Um, as we venture our way up to the top of the field again, I'd just like to extend my deepest thanks for you uh, to actually take the time out to come on to here today. Um, I have been very much looking forward to this. Uh, it's been great to kind of get inside the mind of someone who can create, in my mind, great, uh, really great authentic mods. So it's been very much a learning experience for myself. Uh, one more time, if anybody would like to find you who doesn't, um, if you would just like to give them any social media links one more time. Okay, you can find me on Facebook um, as Peter J Modding. You can also Peter J. Um, I always try to reply to any personal message. So if you have any question, anything, just bring it over. Excellent. So that's Facebook at Peter J. Modin and FSUK at Peter J. Peter J. Yeah. By the way, thank you very much for uh, your invitation. It was a pleasure. Oh. And please enjoy as much as you can uh, my mods. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. We will do. We're all. Uh, I, for one, am very much looking forward to the, the full release of the 300. Uh, but yeah, the, the 135 will always find a way to keep cropping back into my, uh, my save games. So. Uh, Thank you very much, uh, Peter, and we'll um, we'll end it here. So thank you very much for everyone who's watched all the way through. If you have, uh, then don't forget to please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't already. And do please make an effort to go and check out Peter J. Modin on Facebook uh, for any updates for the aforementioned uh, 300 series. That um, trust me, I, I I follow his page already, and there's some great updates coming along there. So the, the various ranges and uh, configurations available so do go and check those out and you will also be updated there as to to when they'll be released so it's a great page to go and like so until next time thank you very much for watching as always do stay safe enjoy what you're doing but most importantly happy farming <laughs>